This reminds me of hobby shows from like 20 years ago. And what I mean by that is that normally we get all the data about all the new items that are going to be on display these days. But back in the day, the manufacturers would sometimes surprise us with a brand new thing that they never told anybody about until the day of the show. And Tamiya has pulled one for us today. Check it out. Boom. They have announced a 148 scale BF 109 G6. Uh, talk about your iconic fighters. Of course, the, the classic fighters of World War II, the Zero, the Spitfire, the Mustang, and the BF-109. The last time Tamiya did a 109 was an E, and that was way back in like 1995. So it's been over 20 years since Tamiya have taken their state-of-the-art technology and applied it to this iconic World War II German fighter. And as usual, they've pulled out all the stops. Let's take a look at some of these features. Of course, it's got you know all the details that you'd want on the on the G, the underwing gun pods. The uh, canopy can be built in either an open or a closed position, and uh, the the real real uh, creme de la creme or, or coup de gras here is the engine cowling. The engine cowling can be removed and replaced in the open or closed position with the panels after you finish the model. And let's let the guy who helped design it show us how that works. So as they've done with some of their kits in the past, uh, there's actually a little magnet uh, hidden inside the nose that helps keep everything in place. So you can see the you can kind of see the little magnet there that keeps the, the part behind the spinner on. And then this just boom just comes right off. As you can see, it also of course has complete DB605 engine detail in there. And then if you wanted to do it in the uh, open position, all of this gets removed. Bit of a process here. And then you just put her back together with the parts for the closed version. And all this again can be done after you have completed and painted the model. So you can change the way you're displaying it based on your uh, feeling of the day or whatever. And here's the open position nose. Of course, uh, there's all the rods and everything that, that go to support the nose when it's open. Uh, but that'll really uh, expand your options for displaying and enjoying your kit after it's been completed. The kit also is going to come with uh, three different marking schemes. You can see them down here uh, on this. Uh, very iconic, uh, of course, units that are going to be represented there. The usual masks and everything for Tamiya to uh, uh, make it the painting job easier too. And here we have it all set and done, full cowling open, so you could obviously recreate a maintenance scene if that's what you wanted to do, uh, or just display it to show all the great detail on that uh, engine that they've worked out for you. So as a guy who got into the hobby industry literally because of my love for World War II aircraft, I am so excited that of course the industry leader, Tamiya, has now decided to treat one of the iconic fighter planes of World War II to such a brilliant model. The upcoming 109G from Tamiya, we don't know uh, a release date, uh, or a price yet, but I'm hearing it's probably not going to be uh, in 2017, probably going to be early 2018, but definitely something we want to look forward to. Hey British Armor fans, we're here at the Tamiya booth and Tamiya has a new kit of the British self-propelled anti-tank gun, the Archer. This kit is coming out in December. It looks pretty cool. If you are a fan of British armored vehicles. It's got an open top there, just a regular self-propelled gun. They did the American, uh, what was that, the 104 last year, I believe. Now we're getting a British, kind of a smaller British version of that kit. It looks pretty cool. This is going to be in 35th scale. And you can come on down here, we can see the parts. It's got all the part layout. And coming on up here, we can see an unpainted version next to that other kit. They just came out with the, oh, that was the Mark II, the Valentine, I believe it was called. That one came out not too long ago. Well, I guess the Valentine and this Archer are kind of based on the same platform, it looks like. So that's probably why we are seeing this Archer. So Tamiya recently released a really giant, what was it, 1 16th scale. M1A2 Abrams, and now they're coming out with a bit more manageable 48th scale Abrams kit. This kit is going to be out this November. We can see the box art here with the rest of the kit, and they've got some pre-assembled 
assembly or displays here. That looks pretty good. If you've never built one of these 48 scale Tamiya kits before, they've got really nice detail and they're not so hard to put together. So if you're maybe not sure if you want to spend the amount for a 35th scale kit or maybe you don't have the skill for it, then definitely I recommend checking out the Tamiya 48th scale armor kits. All right, so another 48th scale armor kit, although this one kind of, gosh, I wouldn't really call it armor, but it is 48th scale and it is the in the armor line. But this is a German heavy tractor, the SS100. And being in 48th scale, what makes this kit kind of cool is 48th scale is also a popular aircraft scale for aircraft models. And this being a tractor, its job is to, yes, tow aircraft. So. If you want to build a 48 scale diorama with this tractor towing an aircraft, Tamiya has you covered now with this new SS100. This kit is going to be due out, oh it does not say actually, but it is on the way from Tamiya. They've got the box art there and some cool, and there's a cool painted sample with camouflage paint and a grey primer version in the back. But this looks like a pretty nifty little kit. If you are into tractors or into German armor or want to make an aircraft diorama, it's got multiple uses. Here's another very pleasant surprise at the Tokyo Hobby Show. Fine Molds, we love Fine Molds, they're great. Fine Molds is going to release an F-14A Tomcat in 172nd scale. Now, some of you may remember that about two and a half years ago, Fine Molds partnered with the magazine, Model Graphics and Scale Aviation, to release an F-14D kit uh, in several installments bundled together with their magazine. And they swore they would never release that kit to the public. And true to their word, well, pretty much so, uh, they're releasing now an F-14A. Now some of these parts are of course going to be the same as were in the F-14D kit they released earlier, but they're already telling us that they've already improved some of the parts that were in the previous kit. Now, you know, if you've built anything by Fine Molds or seen their work before, I don't have to tell you how great this little kit is going to be. You can see some completed examples right here, uh, and they look like uh, as good as anything that comes from any manufacturer these days. Hatches can be built closed or open, canopy, nose cone can be built closed or open. Of course it comes with markings for the Jolly Rogers, because what other markings would you want to put on an F-14A? Uh, and they've also brought out a new missile set. Uh, to go with the F-14A. You know, back when the, when the Tomcat first came out, uh, when it was the A version, of course, it was still envisioned primarily as a platform for the Phoenix missile. So we've got tons of Phoenix missiles that you can load her up with uh, in this new optional set that's going to be coming out. So they've cleaned up the detail, of course made all the appropriate changes uh, from the D to the A and given us the best decals uh, ever. So what more could you want for a mere 4,500 yen? If you're not into building like the brand new big Tamiya 48 scale Tomcat and you need a little bit more uh, compact of an item on your shelf, here's perhaps what's going to be the best 72nd scale Tomcat on the market. The new F-14A from Fine Molds. All right, also from to me on the way, and this time for car modelers, it is the Mercedes AMG, and this is a GT3 edition. So this car recently in 2016 joined the Japanese Super GT racing series. I don't remember which team this car is racing for, but wow, this is a really cool looking car here. Now this is going to be a curbside edition kit, as you can see here from the parts. There is no engine detail, but even for being a curbside, they've got like a lot of the, a lot of the vents and whatnot here are molded in to the parts. So that is pretty cool. It should have quite a bit of detail, even though it is a curbside kit. And this, of course, does come with some kind of standard AMG racing type decals, plus a window masking seal and some of the parts are going to be molded into chrome and there's a bit of mesh that's going to come with the kit. So if you're a car modeler and you are a fan of the Mercedes AMG GT3, be on the lookout for this one. It's going to be due out this November. Alright, now over at the Aoshima booth we are going to take a look. I believe we saw these originally at the Shizuoka Hobby Show, but they still have not yet been released. These are going to be 30 second scale, so a bit smaller than your usual car model. But as you can tell by that box art, these are going to be, as it says in big letters, the snap kits. So they're kind of trying to make car kits that are more like a kind of snap together Gundam kit. 
with some of these parts molded together in colors. And the first two cars that they're going to be coming out with is the Suzuki Hustler. Now this is a K car or Kedosha as they would say here in Japan. So you don't really see this kind of car in a lot of other countries unless you import these really tiny cars from Japan. And they also have a, and everybody's been dying for this one, it's a Prius. So that's exciting for Prius fans that want to snap together a model of their favorite car. But looking over here at the back, it looks like the next kit on the way in this snap together line of cars is going to be either the Subaru BRZ or the Toyota 86 Hachiroku. And there are some silhouettes here from some possible new cars on the way in the snap together line. Of course, in the middle, that is the world famous Toyota 2000 GT. And it looks like maybe a high ace on the top left and a high ace based truck on the top right there. Bottom left, I would have to guess that's a Subaru Impreza. Bottom right, I think that is a Nissan van. I do not remember the name, however. All right, well, speaking of cars we probably don't see outside of Japan too often, from Aoshima's coming this 24 scale kit of the Toyota Pro Box or Succeed. As you can tell, it's a wagon, and do they even still sell wagons anymore in North America, or is everything now SUVs? It's been so long since I was last in that country, I forget. But if you're into kind of the quirky Japanese cars, then hey, Aoshima has a pro box for you. All right, it's the world famous Yamato, and we are going to see this another time here at the Hobby Show. This kit is from Aoshima, and they recently released a full hole version, but it was the Musashi. I believe this kit originally came out as a new cool, new tool kit, but it was for the Ars Technica Nova kind of sci-fi thing with a different kind of hole. But now they're turning that kit into the actual World War II battleship. This kit looks to have some pretty good detail, and there will be some additionally available wooden deck seal and photo etch sets that you can buy for this kit if you want to make your Yamato have as much detail as possible. Now, some of the parts, the deck they have here molded in color, and that looks pretty cool if you are a fan of naval modeling and if you like that Yamato. All right, we're heading back to the future with Aoshima. Now, Aoshima has, pre has previously released the full 24 scale Back to the Future DeLorean cars, but this time, it looks like they're coming out with some new DeLorean cars, and if you can tell, they're a bit smaller than usual because these cars are, it says, 1 43rd scale, so probably not too difficult to assemble, I would imagine we have kit cars from the first movie, the second movie, and the third movie, I believe. We can come down here. You can kind of see the parts just come on these little, little tiny sprue runners. These DeLoreans, it says they will be out this November. All right, so still at the Aoshima booth, but these kits are going to be from BMAX, and if my memory serves me correct, we saw this at the Shizuoka Hobby Show as well. So it makes another reappearance here at the Tokyo Hobby Show. This is the Volvo 240 Turbo. And we have it here in 1986 uh, Kamachi Racing Trim. And there's another one here in the back. Let's see if we can get this one here on camera. If you're a fan of Volvos, I know there are quite a few fans of Volvos. They built these cars like tanks and they definitely have their fans all around the world. Then you won't want to miss out on this Volvo. Those sexy boxy curves. Also coming from BMAX is the Toyota Corona ST191 in, as all BMAX cars pretty much are, as in racing trim. It's basically a standard Japanese four-door sedan, but with racing decals, that makes it more exciting. This car raced in the JTCC, Japanese Touring Car Championship. You can take a look at the parts. All right, now over at the Hasegawa booth, 
Now recently they released a stock kit of the, BMW, of the BMW 2002. We're getting a new version now. This is the BMW 2002 Turbo with those cool wheel flares as you can see there in the image. Now let's take a look down here at the actual completed kit. Now here we have it in two paint jobs, white with the, the cool looking BMW colors, the red and the blue, and silver as well. This looks to be a pretty cool kit. Now this kit is going to be due out at the end of October, it says. So let's take a look at some of the runners we have done here. You can see the wheel flares that you're going to add onto this kit, as well as any other additional parts that are required for the turbo. All right, well, here's something different from Hasegawa. Now, this is going to be in 135th scale, so same scale as a lot of the armor kits, but as you can tell, it is definitely not an armor kit. This is the oh, ZC50C5, and it is a, oh, what do you call these things? A roller. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of, it's always interesting to build stuff that's new, that's kind of different if you ever want to break out of the mold. Now there they have it set up with the driver. I hope it does come with that driver. Let's take a look down here at the runners. Alright, yeah we can see there is a driver figure on the left so you can build this kit with that driver sitting up there on his ZC50C. And I think this is a kind of uh, type of heavy equipment tool that you probably will only see here in Japan. Let's take a look at the painted model as it rotates around. Kind of interesting for those who like to build different types of vehicles. All right, so a new kit in the 450th scale line of ship kits from Hasegawa. Now, if you haven't seen the, the Hasegawa 450 scale ship kits, they're not as big as the 350 scale kits, of course, but usually the bigger the kit, the bigger the, or the more parts they have, the more difficult they are to build. That's really not the case with these 450th scale ship kits from Hasegawa. The 450 scale Hasegawa ship kits, they're, they're big kits, but they aren't really as expensive as some of the other large kits. This, this is the Hyuga, which is the new Japanese maritime self-defense force helicopter destroyer. That's right, it looks like a carrier, but it's not technically a carrier. It's a helicopter destroyer. This is going to be due out in November for only 4,000 yen about. And that's kind of... Looking case. Looks like it's going to come with the off spray, which they don't actually field in the Japanese Maritime Self Defense Force. So, interesting vehicle choice. I think I do remember saying that they were going to procure them at some point for the Self Defense Force here, but I don't think they have yet. Take a look at the sprues. Looks probably not too terribly difficult of a build. If you want to have a big ship, this might be the one for you. Alright, so maybe this is Hasegawa's biggest release for the show this year. What an exciting release it is too. This is the Honda Civic RS. I believe this kit made its initial debut in 1972, but it wasn't on sale until 1973. Now, if, you're, if you know a lot about automotive history, now in America at least, 1973, that was kind of a year that a lot of stuff started to change as far as cars go. They had the oil crisis, and this Civic being only 1200 cc, and it was able to run on both leaded and unleaded gas, which made it kind of very, it was very fuel efficient. And this is basically the beginning of the Japanese compact cars that we know and love today. The very first Civic, we have a new 24 scale kit coming to you from Hasegawa. Let's take a look at some of the pre-built samples they have here. You know, these samples are pretty nicely built there, got a nice gloss paint job to them with the chrome parts. Alright, let's take a look at some of the parts that we are going to get with this car. Now this car is going to be a curbside kit. There is no engine that comes with this kit. But even though it is curbside with no engine, it looks pretty nice. Another classic kit of a classic vehicle from Hasegawa is this looks to be a new tool kit of the Suzuki GT380B. Now this bike was originally out in 1972. Oh, I'm not too exactly sure on the specs for this bike, but just looking at the prototype here, if you're a fan of classic Suzuki bikes, this one looks pretty cool. There you go, it's got some nice detail for that engine. 
and this kit it says it's going to be out in December and it is 1 12th scale. Over at Pit Road, now I, when I saw this kit was announced, I was kind of excited for this. I know a lot of other manufacturers, basically all the other manufacturers, have their own version of the Yamato in 700 scale, but it is kind of cool to see, oh, it's kind of cool to see the Yamato come out with the neutral version of the kit. This one is going to be out in December. It has some pretty nice detail. Now taking a look over here at the other sidewall. Now this is, you can kind of see why I was a bit excited to, to hear about this kit. Is just looking at these images here, this kit is pretty nicely detailed. Now in 700 scale for the Yamato, we have that new Aoshima kit as well. And of course the gold standard has always been the Tamiya kit, which I believe was released back in, oh gosh, was it 97 or 1999? So this kit, and since, since the Tamiya kit was released, there's been a lot of new research done on the Yamato, so it looks like, or Pit Road, I should say, has gone through and taken some of that new research into consideration for this newly tooled Yamato kit. We can scroll, we have to do a nice scroll over some of the details here. And let's get a close-up, if we can, of some of the parts here. Now, if you're a fan of ship modelers, of course, the Yamato being the biggest battleship that was ever designed and actually put into production with its massive 18-inch guns, that's kind of why it holds its special place in history, and a lot of Japanese take pride in this battleship. Now, this case is going to be a full hull or waterline version, so it looks like you're going to be able to choose which version you want to do. Now, the hull itself has some of like, you can see like the welded on where they would weld the plates onto the hull. That's kind of cool, I'm not sure how correct that is in scale, but at least it looks really cool. And that's going to be it for this new 700 scale kit on the way this December, I believe, from Pit Road. All right, another naval model on the way from Pit Road, and this one actually is not really a ship, but this is a 35th scale kit of a 25 millimeter anti-aircraft gun, and I believe these are the guns that you would see on the Yamato and a lot of other Japanese ship kits of, or ships of World War II. Now being in 35th scale, they can really go into all the detail on the gun, because when you're usually building like a smaller ship model kit, the guns are just really very basic, and you can't really see like what the detail would have actually been. So it's kind of cool. This is kind of a cool kit. It's due out in December, it says, for about 3,500 yen. Let's see if we can see some of the parts here. It looks pretty nice. All right, well, Tom Katz, ahoy at this Tokyo model show. Now you saw Scott talk about the Fine Mold 72nd F14A kit, and now it looks like Great Wall Hobby is going to be bringing out their own new tool kit, and this is going to be the F14D. So I guess if you really want to have an A, go for the Fine Molds kit, and if you want to have a D, well, good luck finding one of the older Fine Molds kits that came with the magazines, or you can get this Great Wall Hobby kit. Now they do have kind of like a basic sample that was built and painted all in silver. It doesn't say what date this kit, we can expect to have this kit out by, but it is on the way from Great Wall Hobby. All right, so another new tool kit on the way from Great Wall Hobby, this time in 48 scale. This is the Russian aircraft, this time the Su-35S, Su-35S Flanker E. Now, if you like the Russian aircraft, oh, yeah. There we go. It looks pretty cool. I like the colors that they use for the Russian aircraft. And uh, you can see these similar types of colors. They tend to use them on the aggressive aircraft in the, the American military forces. But this is standard kind of paint scheme for Russians here. Looks pretty nice. All right, so we're actually over here at the Ebro booth. Ebro, you've got to be thinking, well, they don't really do a whole lot of plastic models. and. 
especially not aircraft models. Ebro usually does die-cast type car kits, but recently they've been getting into plastic models as well. They've had a few plastic model car kits, and now they are coming out with the Honda Jet in 148 scale. There we go, take a look, there's got the decals on there. You can see all the parts, finely molded. Oh, there's some, some parts molded in chrome. That's kind of interesting. You see that on aircraft models, but you, I mean, you see that on uh, automotive car models, but you don't really see that a whole lot on aircraft models.